Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I will give you a lecture about root canal anatomy and access cavity preparation. وأعطيكم نبدا عني أنا دكتورة سارة القحطاني محاضرة بجامعة الملك سعود تخرجت البكالوريوس والماجستير من جامعة الملك سعود. At the beginning of each lecture, always I like to remind myself and remind the student of the main objective of root canal treatment. The main objective of root canal treatment is to create a good environment for periapical healing. And this objective can be achieved with biomechanical preparation, microbial control, and finally obturation. And it's impossible to do any root canal treatment procedure from preparation and obturation unless you have a good access cavity. Most of our students are facing difficulty in access cavity preparation. Then other errors might follow. Always, before you start access cavity preparation, you should determine the root canal configuration. According to Kranzer and Ranko, the pulp chamber is always in the middle of the tooth at the level of cemento enamel junction. In the Endodontics Colleagues for Excellence newsletter, spring 2010, they recommend the first step of access cavity is pre-access analysis. Pre-access analysis is performed by identification of the shape and location of cemento enamel junction with a perioprobe. Coming back to the very important question, how to determine root canal configuration? First, with a knowledge of root canal anatomy. Knowledge of the anatomy of each tooth type is very important. In addition to the pre-access analysis we talked about. The second point to determine root canal configuration is by careful radiographic interpretation. And the last but not the least point is when you open adequate access cavity and do a careful examination of the pulp chamber floor. These are the components of root canal system, the pulp horns, orifice, apical foramen, and this is the pulpal floor. Always put in your mind that root canal system anatomy is very complex and the simple straightforward anatomy is really rare. We have a lot of classification of root canal configuration, but the most commonly used are Wine 1969 and Bertucci 1984. You have to consider that root canal anatomy is different in coronal third, middle third, and apical third. Here I did a simple drawing of lower molar. So what do you need to consider here is the level of cemento enamel junction. And you have to notice the cervical constriction to avoid starting your excess cavity here in this area. So when I apply Kranzer and Ranko rule, they said it's in the middle of the crown. So this is the middle of the crown at the level of cemento enamel. Coming to the midroot consideration, always expect to see isthmuses, this narrow ribbon shaped communication. And here I continued my imagination by drawing some communication between canals. So the importance of knowing about this communication not to instrument them, but to use a lot, a lot of irrigation to act here. And now we reach the most important root canal third, which is the apical third, you should know about three important landmarks. It's 
It's very important to know the apical third anatomy to know where to stop our root canal treatment here at the minor apical foramen. Now let's see the root canal anatomy of individual teeth. Here, this is from Pathways of the Pulp. This is an axis cavity in maxillary first molar, and usually this is the location of MV2. لو حطينا في بالنا إنه بس three canals, I will never find the fourth canal. You should remove this dentin here to expose MV2. كذا نكون مرينا على كل 3D videos of root canal anatomy. It's available in Cohen Pathways 11th edition. We already covered the root canal anatomy system of individual teeth, and now we will move to the objectives of axis cavity preparation. We always start with removing carious lesion, and then support an enamel when present, and conserve the sound tooth structure. The third objective is the roofing of pulp chamber completely, and we are facing problem with students in this point. Let's say this is your burr. You enter to the pulp chamber here, then you enter here. And most of students think, okay, this is 
the mesial orifice and this is the distal orifice and still they are having part of dentin here this is the roof of the pulp chamber so this is not deroofed yet they think this is an orifice but this is the real orifice and here it's just a hole in the pulp roof and when I said deroofing I mean to remove the whole roof of the pulp like this back to our objectives so now we will remove all coronal pulp tissue when you remove all coronal pulp tissue you will be able to locate all root canal orifices so and the last objective here is to achieve straight line axis so we'll try to do it here this is my straight line axis Burr selection are very important you can start the gross cares excavation with a large round burr then you go with the smaller burrs Pepper diamond burr is very, very excellent for deroofing and finalize your axis cavity preparation. Endospoon excavator is used to remove the pulpal tissue coronally, then barbet brooch is used to remove the radicular tissue. And when we say straight line axis, this is straight line axis. This is general guideline for axis cavity preparation of anterior teeth. Always start perpendicular to the lingual surface with your burr. Once you feel the drop, move your burr to be parallel to the long axis of the root. Removal of the lingual shoulder is very important. It will help you to clean inside and give you better shaping. And if there is extra canal, it will expose. Dense invaginatus and palatal groove might exist in the upper lateral incisor so you should give special consideration for those cases for posterior teeth access cavity always should be started perpendicular to the occlusal surface and the starting point of the access cavity always will be in the middle then you extend it to have your final outline this is a roof of a certain room and i want to see what's happening inside I make a hole in the roof, still I can't see what's inside. I will enlarge this hole. Okay, I can see here there's a bed and there's a bed here, but still I can't see what's in the corners. Because this is not straight line axis, so I need to see the corners. I will remove more. Yeah, I can see better now. Then I will finish it. Perfect. The same concept of deroofing the room should be applied on the pulp chamber. Special consideration should be given for cervical dentine ledge and we should remove it with gates gliden. Removing cervical dentine ledge will give you better straight line access. This is the access cavity preparation of premolar. It should look like this. In the lower premolar, always consider the presence of second canal and extend your axis lingually. Coming to the last part of this lecture, access cavity preparation related mishap. Most of our students, they have tendency to do under extensions, then they will have missing canals. In a proper access cavity, you will be able to see the line connecting the pulpal floor 
with the pop chamfer wall. So if you don't see that line all around, you have to extend your axis. The second mishap is overextensions. The problem with overextension is that it will weaken to the structure. The roofing is the most common mistake we face every day with students in endodontics. The reason why students make incomplete the roofing is because they lack the knowledge of root canal anatomy. And when I look to this picture, I know this is dentin, this is not pulpal floor. How do I know? Pulpal floor should have line connecting between the orifices. Pulpal floor also usually is dark in color. When you see light color of dentin and no lines connecting between orifices that you think it's orifice, you know this is incomplete deroofing. So when you don't align your burr properly, you will end up with perforation or gouging. The worst mistake you could ever do in dentistry is to open the wrong tooth. This is a vital tooth and this is the tooth need endo.